Wait, hold on. This might be it. I'm going to go right when he crosses the skyline, okay? One, two, three. I shot it. I shot the photo. Wow, that was impulsive. I guess that's the only photo we get. I was walking to the studio recently and I had Eminem's Lose Yourself stuck in my head for some reason. And when I got to that point where it's like, you only get one shot, do not miss it. I thought to myself like, hey, that could be kind of fun. And so I quickly pulled out my phone, wrote down some notes, and uh, here we are. So in today's video, we're gonna go on a whole bunch of photo adventures with only one caveat. And that caveat is that I only get to shoot one photo on those photo walks. Just one shot. I've gotta keep my eyes open, look around, and make sure that when I finally press that shutter, that it's an image actually worth taking. I'm bummed that I did not get here nearly as early as I thought I would, but the sun's still pretty, so that's something. I would love to get a swan in this photo. All right, let's move. Tell you what, this spot was a lot easier to find than I expected. Yeah, that sun is aggressive. All right, well, I'm gonna toss the 7200 on. I wanna get as much of that skyline as I can. It's pretty, it just needs something else, you know? I'm gonna watch this for a second, because this swan might poke his head out right now. It's tricky trying to balance, like, waiting for some kind of fun action to happen but also not risking losing the sunrise completely. I just wish a big flock of birds would fly over, you know? Oh, there's the swan. Okay, wait, hold on, this might be it. I'm gonna go right when he crosses the skyline, okay? One, two, three. I shot it. I shot the photo. There's a lot more birds in frame than I was hoping for, but the swan itself looks pretty cool. Uh, shall we go to the van and see what we can turn this into? Open Luminar. Here is the only photo I took, and it's kind of crooked. It's okay. Gosh, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm gonna wanna clean up. The first thing I do in Luminar every time is start off here with these suggested templates, and I just like to scroll through because I'd say most of the time, they get me most of the way there. Let's start with Fast Fix and get to the editing. With my colors landing in the ballpark of where I want them in the end, I'm now gonna focus on cleaning up the image, just trying to take away some of these distractions so that we're only left with the parts of the image that I was hoping to capture. There's honestly not a lot more I want to do this, but I do want to check out uh, the atmosphere and see if just fogging this up a little bit does much. I also added a sun ray right where the actual sun was in the image, just to give the lighting a bit more of an interesting punch. You know what I learned? Taking only one photo is harder than I thought it would be. So this is it, the one and only photo I took that morning. And honestly, I think it's kind of cool. Wish the swan was bigger, but I like it. That's the image. Oh, and by the way, there's like a bonus photo adventure slash tip at the end of all this. So make sure you stick around because, um, well, I'll tell you what, it's what the thumbnail is from and, you know. All right, so we are at a high park now and it's so nice out, but I just don't want to carry all my gear. So I'm going to put one lens on the R. It's a challenge, I guess. I don't know. Think I'll live to regret just bringing the 35? No. So we were walking down this path and there's all these chipmunks and they're super curious and cute, which I love. But the risk is if I only have one shot, they move so quickly that if I pull the trigger when it's running off, the shot won't just be like, not good, it'll be bad. It'll be an unusable image. So I don't know if I want to risk it on a chipmunk. I took a photo. There he is, look at that. It's sharp, there's no doubt about it. Import single image. 
So let's hit up the templates and see what it suggested at the beginning. Savannah, let them roar. Once again, the process here looks the same. I'm just cycling through these suggested templates, trying to find one that best matches the tones that I'm hoping for in the image. I'll often play with this Accent AI slider, which kind of brightens and darkens different parts of the image based on its understanding of what the image is. So it's kind of like a smarter contrast, but with object awareness. I don't know if you can see it much from there, but it's just like, it's just a photo of a squirrel, you know, he's, he's fine. I'm gonna adjust the yellows and the greens just a hair to try and separate the squirrel from the, the what's not a squirrel. And I'm gonna just add a little vignette here. Choose the subject. Bloop. Put that down. We got ourselves a singular squirrel photo. It's all right, it's okay. I also ended up cleaning up some of the distractions in the rock at the bottom there and uh, in the end, you know, not so bad. Not so bad. The next one we have planned is going to be a portrait, which should give me a little more control with a human than I had with uh, wildlife. So wish me luck for that one. I often have a few photos when I'm out and about that I'm like, that's going to be a good photo. That's going to be a good photo. But I'm always shooting other small details or different frames that I wouldn't normally in the hopes that when I get to the edit, it turns into something. And usually some of my favorite images come from the ones that I didn't expect to be the best images. But I still really appreciated the process of actually taking my time, slowing down, and not just like pow, 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 and you know, seeing if I got anything good at all. They've been planting a tree on my front lawn. Who's that? It's the city. <laughs> NPC. Hi there. It's so hot. <laughs> I should have worn my shoes. We need a close up of his feet. Can't burn me. <laughs> Why don't we keep this as a backup and if we don't find anything better while we're out there, we'll come back here because that's kind of cool. I'll admit. Florence and I were climbing this big rock that you're not really supposed to climb, but Zach noticed while filming that the light looking up here and shooting into the sun is actually kind of cool. Honestly, I didn't believe him. And he, he kind of showed me what it was looking like. And uh, yeah, he was right. And I like it because it's not a kind of photo or portrait that I really normally shoot for. So I don't know. I'm gonna see if we can pull something off here. That's not my normal style. All right, Florence, let's get you edited. One of the things that I love most about Luminar AI is it doesn't feel like you need to be a seasoned pro or have spent your whole life working with editing software in order to get results that you're happy with. It's really intuitive and the controls are laid out in a way that's quite intuitive for regular people and also uh, photo people. I think the sky is still a hair too bright. Like I wanna save yeah. some more of that. And now you can go to the optics section here to just clean up some of this fringing. Yeah. See, so you get rid of all the like purple haloing up there. Mm. Okay, this is ready. This just like, I think shifts every hue. Whoa. Which sometimes oh, is like kind of yeah, cool. Sometimes. Other than their skin tone, which looks way worse here. I kind of like yeah. all the other colors. So I wonder if we go yeah, back. Yeah, let's just now fix the skin tone. I can get us in that back a bit. Yeah, I feel like this has more of like a cinematic mm -hmm. vibe to it now that we did that. Mm -hmm. Is that your phone saying time to go? Yeah. And here we have it, the one and only photo. It's a photo unlike anything I've ever taken and honestly, it's a vibe. Hello? Hello? Every so often on the way up, you get these like windows through the greenery that show the city below it. So it's fun trying to find frames within frames to see if there's anything interesting through here. Right now, not so good.
now's probably a good time to let you know that I forgot to turn my mic on for this entire hike. So here's the gist of it. We kept looking and looking and looking and I could not find a single frame that I was happy with. Part of it was that I wanted the light to drop more so that the city would start lighting up. And part of it was, it was just really hot and I was tired and sometimes you just aren't feeling it. Maybe making a note on the fact that we haven't got it, which means we just gotta wait, we just gotta yeah. keep doing, going until we get it. Uh, we've been out here for... Until, at the last minute, I spotted this guy here, who is now being lit by the tungsten street lights, and he was being filled in by the blue of the sky, and there was just this beautiful color contrast. Took it. I think that was kind of cool. I think like it was actually kind of a cool photo. Got a nice ring light on his head. This could be cool. So, we just get big city lights. Like, already. The process here is the same as it always is for me. Find a good template that gets me close, balance the light and color just a little bit as needed, clean up any distractions, and that's pretty much the entirety of it. So while I edit that, let me tell you one of my absolute favorite things about Luminar AI that I don't think I've ever mentioned in a video, which is that it's not a subscription. You just buy it. You buy it one time and then you own it and you can use it forever. There's this really cool feature in Luminar AI that I like a lot. If you come down here into color harmony, there's this thing called split color warmth where basically you can just choose between the warm parts and the cool parts of the image. So you can say, I want the warm parts of the image warmer or cooler, and I want the cool parts of the image warmer or cooler as well. We could say the uh, orange is a little overwhelming and we could just tone just that down, or we could really ramp it up. Or we could say, maybe I like the way the, the warm parts of this image are sitting, but I really wanna just make these blues a bit uh, more blue. Now, just for the fun of it, let's experiment with adding a little bit of a uh, grain. Just a little bit. Finally, I also decided to just throw a sun inside of this light post here because I find that if you're careful with it, you can just make the lighting a little more dynamic, which can just add to the overall mood and tone of a photo. Big fan of the fake sun. I'm probably gonna come back to this image tomorrow and see how I feel, but for tonight, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm happy with how that image came out and I was kind of worried there for a while, so. This is certainly not the image I had in mind when we had hiked out to this location, but you know what? I'm not mad about it. The final photo that I wanted to share with you is one that I put on my Instagram a few weeks back that I actually originally shot for my Strava account. I got so many comments on Instagram being like, how many takes did that take? How many tries did it take to nail that? photo and the answer is just one. I'm sure you saw it in the thumbnail already and I'll be honest, this method is kind of cheating but I wanted to share it with you because I think it's a surprisingly fun technique if you're just trying to get photos of yourself. It's not for a client or something too serious and the entire secret to how I got that photo is. Okay, just do it. I'll hold it while you're doing it, don't worry. Okay, hold it down. <laughs> <laughs> As silly as it is, I was only ever anticipating turning this into a photo, so I switched my phone to the ultra-wide camera, put it into 4K60 to give me as many frames as possible, and then I just grabbed the video, and I scrubbed it to the frame that I liked the most, which is this frame right here, and then I literally just made a screenshot. So let's pull this photo into Luminar here. As always, the first thing I do is just test out some of these suggested templates, and then I build from that. So featured face, I'm already pretty good with that. Let's see, focus, oh, the greens are a little greener. Midday, even greener, like that's a real punchy. Let's go with midday, right? Fix this crop, and because this is in video, this is naturally a 16 by nine frame, but I'm gonna crop it a bit more. From here on out, it's the same old, same old, just nailing down the colors and exposure to make sure they're sitting where I want, and then just adding a little bit of grain to tie the whole image together and honestly make up for the lack of detail and sharpness because it was video off of my iPhone. I'm sure some of you might be thinking like, oh, but that's just spray and pray. That's just like shoot a million photos and get the one you're looking for. And that's the opposite of the whole technique you're going for in this video. And like, the thing is, this is the exact image I was going for. I knew exactly where to place my camera and I'm taking the photo of myself, you know, I can't exactly set a timer and hope for the best in one frame. So if you're anything like me and you wanna take silly photos for your Strava account, don't be afraid to just toss your phone, toss your camera into video mode 
and find the frame that looks best. At the end of the day, if the image sparks the memory or if the image creates a feeling, it doesn't matter if you shot it in RAW. It doesn't matter if it's 80 megapixels or if it's less than two megapixels. I don't know, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I had a lot of fun doing this and you're so great. I love you. I'm gonna go put my kids to bed because it's, um, well, I guess I'm filming myself here. Stop.